orientation for students on teaching practice. Under this orientation, we shall discuss meaning of teaching, code of conduct, and the use of instructional materials. The lecturer is Professor A.U. Adeogun, Shama University Teaching Practice Board. Teaching is of imparting knowledge. It can as well be described as process of passing the content of the lesson to the learners. It is a deliberate conscious and conscious attempt to communicate the content of instruction to students by the teacher. Teaching involves three actors. The first one, who normally be in charge or control the class, is known to be a teacher, followed by the students, who can as well be described as the learners. And lastly, the content. Teaching can as well be described as a process of communication between the teacher, the learners, as well as other variables to use. Teacher normally send the pass the message to the learners, and this message is not ordinary. It must be guided by the content or the syllabus to teach. Then there must be a channel which we normally refer to as methods of teaching. The learner stands as the receiver. And after all the process of communication, kind of feedback. Feedback is as well described as evaluation in teaching. As a teacher, there is need for you, there is need for you to get yourself familiar with various methods of teaching. They are numerous, but you need to know most of those methods so that one will be able to apply the most appropriate one as the situation calls for it. What do I mean? There is no best of these methods. For the content to teach, the people to teach, and conditions surrounding the teaching situation uh, determines the best methods to apply at a particular time. And among these teaching methods are demonstration, interview, the use of group method, observation, direct instruction, textbook, role playing, project, problem solving, field trips, play and dramatization, surveys, experimentation and the use of resource persons, peer education, question and answer, debate, continuous progress, learning method, counseling, lecture and talks, display of exhibition, practical exercise, storytelling, games and songs, modeling. Teaching methods cannot stand on its own, but as a professional teacher, there are some basic skills you need to acquire. And among these teaching skills are the following. Teacher confidence before the students. It's not a disease that your first appearance in the class may look somehow. You may likely forget all the facts before you. Especially if you are teaching for the first time. So don't see it as a problem at all. But you have to design a means to overcome this challenge. Meaning that you need to do a kind of riasa so that you'll be able to gain the necessary confidence before your students. And other skills necessary to develop on are voice quality, teacher's conduct, teacher's mode of dressing, teacher's expression, distracting mannerism, sense of humor, the use of chalkboard, anticipation, and so on and so forth. These teaching skills, coupled with methods of teaching, makes you distinct as a professional teacher. 
And you must find a way to get yourself familiar with all these things. Also, teaching skills and methods of teaching does not make teaching and learning a complete task. There are other things like features of learning that you must get familiar with. And among those features of learning are the way you relate the new content with learners' previous experience. Also, the learning environment. The learning environment must be conducive. There shouldn't be any forms of distraction at all. As a teacher, you must make sure you do everything possible to remove anything that can distract your learners. Also, you must also you must always prepare to make use of instructional materials in your class. Learners must involve, especially your your skills or methods should or must be capable of changing your learner's character. So, learning must be meaningful through the use of appropriate use of language, meaning that as a teacher, you should be able to communicate in a way that your learners will be able to grab the message. So, you should do everything possible to come down to their learners. Forget to recognize individual differences. Don't forget, there may likely be some slow learners and fast learners. So these traits should be recognized. You must recognize and make sure that you balance the equation in your class. This is very, very important as a prospective teacher. Also, you need to get familiar with the concepts in teaching and learning. There are basic concepts in art of teaching and learning. That is why we always say that teaching is a profession. It's not for dig and carry. You need to acquire these skills before you excel in art of teaching. So among the concepts in teaching and learning are managing the classroom very well. As a teacher, you should be able to manage your class very well. You should be able to organize the class very well. There must be class leadership. For instance, in tertiary institutions like university, they make use of coordinators. In primary school or secondary school, probably they use class captains or monitors. So all these should be properly put or make effect, you should be properly put in place and you must make effective use of them. Furthermore, there is need for adequate classroom arrangement. Classroom arrangement involves seating arrangement, class control, and so on and so forth. So as a teacher, you must be in charge. You are the governor of your class. You must make sure that the right thing is put in place in your class. There shouldn't be any forms of distracting mannerism among your students. Make sure you are controlled as expected. Furthermore, there is need for record keeping. Take for instance, attendance register is very, very important, especially if you are a class teacher. You need to make, you need, you must make sure that you keep your attendance register up to date. Not only that, what about the um, time book? You must sign your time book daily. It's very, very important. The time you arrive, you must write it as well as the time you are leaving the schools. Your lesson notes also. Anytime you are leaving the school, there must be a kind of movement, movement book to sign. All these are very, very necessary. Furthermore, you need to acquire some basic skills in art of teaching, like writing of instructional objectives, skills of stimulus variation, questioning, 
skill of explanation, use of chalkboard, and so on and so forth. All these are, are important in art of teaching. Furthermore, time management and mastering of subject matters in art of teaching. See, in most cases, you will see some student teachers rounding up within te under 10 minutes. Under the pretense that the supervisor is in hurry, you have no business about that. You should be able to spread, you have at least 40 minutes to use for your class. You should be able to spread your activities throughout that period. It's very, very important. So as a teacher, you manage your time effectively. Then always complement your methods of teaching with the use of instructional materials. Instructional materials normally facilitate your uh, normally facilitate teaching learning process in the class. Instructional materials can be either human resources or material resources. Human resources are those persons by virtue of their experience or professional background contribute to meaningful teaching in the class. There may likely be some topics that you as a teacher may not be good, may, may, not, may not have adequate knowledge about, but what can invite a professional to come and do justice on it? For instance, a nutritionist may be invited to the class, at least to come and discuss the necessary things with the learners. So this can be easily referred to as the use of human resources. So um, apart from the other material resources include all the tools used by the teacher in the classroom. They are limitless. Anything that can contribute to the content to teach can be referred to as material resources. The common table, the common exercise book in the class can serve as material resources, as material resources in the class. So material resources are limitless. It provides learning experiences for students and likewise, it makes your teaching methods more meaningful before the learners. So you must make sure that your material It can either be visual, it can be audio, and it may likely be the combination of the two. Material resources may be in forms of printed materials. It may be graphic materials like maps, sketch, graph, charts. It may be real, the real objects. It may likely be still picture like photographs, painting, pictorial, illustration, and drawing. So material resources is very important in art of teaching. And whenever you are selecting your resources for teaching, you must make sure that such materials is related to the content to teach. The materials must be uh, selected and evaluated very well before you eventually bring it to the class. The accuracy must be very, very important. Then you must ensure group suitability. Consider the age of the learners, the class size, as well as the information, the materials we convey to your learners. So, important when selecting your uh, material resources. It has its own benefits. It normally attracts and holds learner's attention. It helps to retain the information better than mere talking in the class. 
There is in this common saying that sin is believing. The, once the opportunity is given to them to see what you are discussing, it will be the, it will be able to stay better than mere talking. They will be able to retain the information, hold on to it, and put it into into use. All these are very very important. Learning process becomes more clear and interesting. Material resources. It makes it interesting and so on and so forth. The third aspect of this uh, discussion is code of conduct. Um, we, as a university of education, university has its own code of conduct for students on TP, and you need to get yourself familiar with it. Some of those offenses that you may likely commit are partial or total absence from the school. I mean from orientation program. Like this material is being given to you, you must make sure you read and you respond accordingly, according to the instruction. So failure to do so may lead to disqualification from participating in teaching practice exercise. Then if you have sent from school without written permission from the constituted authority. What do I mean by constituted authority? Authority from your school of teaching as well as teaching practice board in the university. So the punishment may likely be zero mark. Then rudeness or insubordination to school principal staff or your supervisor. Punishment includes formal apology or extension of the teaching practice exercise in the same school. The persistent lateness to school may attract extension of teaching practice. Refusal to particip participate in school extracurricular activities it may also lead to extension of your teaching practice until when you uh, improve. Fighting with fellow students, it may lead to repetition of teaching practice exercise. Theft, collecting money from students under false pretense, it may attract repetition of the teaching practice exercise. Damage, loss of school property, refund with apology or repetition of teaching practice exercise is the punishment. Then I'm not addressing, shall be dressing or overdressing. It may lead to extension of teaching practice exercise. Then lateness, failure to collect or submit relevant information to teaching practice board may lead to extension of teaching practice exercise. Then reported and proven misbehavior may lead to repetition of teaching practice or expulsion from the university. Uh, proving giving any forms of gratification to supervisor may attract repetition of teaching practice exercise or even expulsion from the university. Lesson assessments or assessment of students outside the practicing school may attract zero mark in that particular exercise. Is another punishment as well. Thank you and God bless. This is the end of the presentation. We welcome your reaction after downloading and listening, after downloading this information. Your reaction is necessary for record purpose at the TP board. Thank you and God bless.